not super bad though. Yeah. This is remote, Dad. Okay, two green gates. And then up the cement driveway. There we go. That's them. Hi. This is great. Oh my gosh, you're right on the top of the hill. <gasps> wow. Yes, it's uh, very high up. We're at 1,700 feet elevation. Oh, wow. And then the top is um, a little bit higher, about 1,750. So your house is not just one unit. It's kind of like a compound. You know, everyone has their own space. You know, I appreciate the fact that it's not a, a series of super regular boxes. It's very humane. Well, possibly because I didn't have a tractor or a bulldozer. I worked very slowly and I did the best that I could. So when you came up here, there was nothing. Like, yeah. Okay. Nothing. This was the only access to the property. It's 40 acres. But only an acre or two really, it was really steep everywhere. And so the guy who sold us the property and he offered to work a deal with us, he wanted 50,000 and we got started with that. <laughs> so the idea to come up here was because it was affordable, because you wanted to get away from it all? Yeah, and I wanted to build with reclaimed material and I didn't know how that was going to be. And in the 90s, a lot of factories were coming down in California. All the steel from this building came up from the Lockheed plant in Burbank, California. And the doors are all used, doors and windows. And I would fill up the truck of broken concrete every day, twice a day. Broken concrete? This looks like stone. It's all broken concrete. A local gravel company guy let me stop by his yard and pick it up. Truck loads, 15 years. Design after resource is what I called it. You know, pile up the material and then see what could happen with it. They don't like you to build like that. And you really have, you have to have a plan for a single family residence. Okay. You have to build within a year to two years. And with all the materials Cameron was collecting. It took about 15 years to build this. It took about 15 years to build this. So where were you living? Uh, in a trailer. Up here? Yeah. Yes. A 24 foot long, 8 foot wide, 1973 three. Prowler trailer. For 15 years? Eight years she was cooking out of it. When we moved up here, our son was two and a half and our, our daughter was 10. And so it was a big life change yeah. for all of us. So it was four of you in a trailer? Yes. Cooking out and of And then the she trailer. said, I'm not going to do it anymore. <laughs> and I'm going to take half the shop because I do woodwork and metalwork. And she took the, the wooden floor, the, what was going to be the woodworking side of the- A uh, kitchen We lip turned space. it into a kitchen. Oh, wow. It looks like a book, like- Where you can like, yeah. do some yeah. homework. And so here upstairs you have- My daughter and I made the crow's nest, we call it, that mm -hmm. top portion. This was just a random piece of three inch angle iron I found in a steel yard. So it was kind of designed around this radius, right? and it fit here, and I was able to get it up there, and then we... Because you built a little lofted bedroom? Yeah. yeah, so our son, when our daughter had gotten tired of living with him, and we were just starting on this room. There it was still a dirt floor. There was actually a little door up there, and so he just lived up there, and it climbed a ladder. There were walls and there were windows, but none of the interior finishes were done. And it was a dirt floor. So this room, I mean, it's kind of the biggest space you have, right? It is the biggest space you have. Yeah. And it took about two and a half years to collect the steel and the wood, piled it up outside. When we poured the concrete, the only thing I committed to was 10 feet because I'd done a lot of work on Victorians in San Francisco and I knew I didn't want to have an eight foot ceiling. It just so happened that a bunch of the pieces of steel were nine six. And so you can see I added five or six inches to the tops to match up with the concrete columns that I had poured. So in 1998, we poured the concrete for the building but it wasn't until 2001 
that I had enough steel and wood to, to build from there. These were just standing by themselves up here for three years. Columns. Yeah. So the idea was to just really have enough. I, uh, steel, uh, steel and steel. wood, Sorry. yeah. Wow, it all comes to a, a center. Yeah. yeah, and there's a skylight up there. And that's the craziest fire requirement to have interior sprinklers. And this square rebar was the original rebar. It's, this is a hundred year old stuff. And this is sloped. Wow. It's like a fun house. I think the county called this an alternative loft space. This is part of the bond beam that runs around the entire building at the 10 foot height. So these were nine something and I added these spacers to accommodate the top of the columns. Because this was an, like a last minute add on when I was framing the roof. I thought, oh, Jaren could live in here, you know, <laughs> free his sister up. So you just took the space there was. It's just a couple angles, right? Yeah. And the floor down here? That's the same wood that came from the Lockheed factory. We're in the middle of paradise. No, he doesn't have We're in the middle of... Do you know what you're in? You're in a bowl. You're seriously, it's a mixing bowl. Yeah, I know that. No, it's a, mom, no, it's a teacup. <laughs> a teacup. <laughs> this was like a kind of a skate bowl, bicycle, because we, all our water is collected from the roof and it comes down a series of pipes that bypass this bowl and go into a 5,000 gallon tank on the other side. So that's the, that's the first collection tank. Yeah, so the water from the roof goes into that tank. And from there, it goes down to our well infrastructure where there's a, a little pumping station and we pump to the top of the mountain. The kids must have loved this. Or maybe this was for you. <laughs> I f w we finished it and I grabbed a skateboard, fell on my shoulder and I wasn't good for a year. And I'm like, I shouldn't do that. But this year it was so full, yeah. it actually peaked over. This is the lowest section. So it peaked over this edge and it was overflowing for the first time ever. We had 55 inches of rain and it filled up with just the surface area collection. And then it's the largest, would you say the largest bird feeder, bird pond? Because Lots all the birds. birds, all the quail, and other wildlife come and drink the water. But we left this like this because we have baby newts. I don't newts. know what to do with the newts. So this, this used to be, a, I think, an industrial size mixing yeah, bowl. Yeah, big hope oh mixing bowl. It's stainless steel. I think we got it for $300 salvage. The water goes through a filter and then a really small circulating pump goes through the panels and comes out the little spout there. And it's a little bit green because all the pipes are copper. And so it's got a, some copper twinge, but I love this thing. It's my favorite thing I built. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Just to sit in this every day is so great. Come on, time to go. Okay, it's not funny. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Is it warm? It's just a question. It's back yeah, it's kind of warm. Nice. So is there a reason that your home is shaped, it's not round, it's more a um, pentagon? I don't even know how many sides, but is there, a, is it because of the like wind? We initially wanted to have the whole building as a straw bale structure, but the first winter was 1997, 98, it was El Nino. And we got 48 inches of rain that year. And so I decided not to go with straw, but I had already poured an 18 inch wide foundation and I thought the straw walls, 18 inch walls would be cool, not square. And I thought it would help maybe for the wind. These big storms come, you know, they come from the north, but they spin from the south. And so the big winds, just 100 plus miles an hour up here, wind driven rain. It's pretty serious. Really? These are hurricane shutters from Florida and they help a lot. We used to get these whistles. I had to have to put a two by six on the inside of the the window to keep it from flexing. It, it 
it's huge. So with that strength, something would blow away. Like, oh yeah. That's why we, we tried to make everything really heavy. You know, the, the top for the tub. All these walls are insulated with uh, surfboard foam. No. From Patagonia surfboards. They like to use their offcuts. They like to. They saved them because they didn't want to throw them away. Yvonne Chenard, he just let us have as much as we wanted, and I figured out how to use it. So, these are two by six walls. Thick wall. This is the shower room. Yeah, and you just stand okay. here and shower. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you can wash and do your this <laughs> shampoos. All built in. Oh, that's great. And this is the only thing we kept from the trailer living life. That was from the oh. Crowley trailer. <laughs> the mirror. It was a cabinet. It was a cabinet with a mirror. It's pretty cool, huh? Yes. What about the ceiling? I think it, it was chicken coop wood. So, okay. Yeah. It looks beautiful. You just find things. Yeah, yes. you keep, if you have a project, it's amazing. Things happen. Really? <laughs> you just have to have a place to put it. This was a father-daughter project. Broken concrete brick, glass block. This whole section of the building, I started here and the walls leaked. No matter what I did to the CMU block, the concrete block, it would leak. Anything, you know, 100 mile an hour wind-driven rain, I couldn't do anything. So I poured a foundation three feet out and a little foundation for this and this is all steel framed and it has holes in the walls so that if it does get wet, it dries out. And hurricane windows. Yeah, and these windows close this way so when the wind hits them, they just get tighter. As you were working on your house, did you need to leave the property every day to go somewhere else? Yeah, I brought our daughter. She left early in the morning and so I'd bring our daughter to school and our son was two and a half, so he would come here and work with me. Two and a half, huh? It's the key to slow growth. You put a two-year-old on every job site, and it's guaranteed. She probably loved it, right? Materials and... Yeah. Our daughter for high school, she wrote a paper, and it was called Pioneers of the Modern Era. <laughs> and she tells some stories, what it was like from age 10 to 18, living this remote yeah, and in a trailer. She never had her own bedroom here. This metal came from the Lockheed plant in Burbank. Okay. And the, uh, and the, the bond beam that runs on the top of these concrete pillars goes all the way around the building and what a door. That's, that's a good. great door. Yeah, that's all used material, aluminum and stainless. Wow. Used windows. You came up with this design. Yeah, it's just a big roller on a track. Really simple. So like Lockheed, you just heard about they were giving away stuff. And that steel was way up high. So they built bombers there and it was 32 acres under roof and they had huge beams there, you know, three foot, two and a half foot, one inch thick beams and they could carry these bombers on the inside. And I think it was 40 feet high and the clerestory, you know, windows. And they took, I got to see them blow up a section, a hundred feet by 200 feet. They would use oxycetylene torches and cut the bottom of the piers and then use explosives and drop a hundred by 200 foot section. And so some of these, some of the steel was bent from, and so I would have the kids, I had a little ramp type situation. I filled the truck up with broken concrete and then I would drive up the beams and the kids would tell me when they f would flatten out and then I'd back off and we, we hand straightened them with the truck. It was great. Yeah. yeah, we had a lot of broken concrete around. Did you talk about the wine bottle wall, Cameron? Oh, yeah. I forgot how many there. I think there's like 
300 or yeah, 380. 380 bottles in this little section. And that was just to get light and because you could make whatever you wanted. It's your house, your build. Yeah. I mean, finally, we did have to go through the process of building and planning, but we are, we're already uh, 12, 14 years into it. That's okay. You can build and then ask for permission. No, we didn't ask. Somebody reported us. Oh. They said we were living in our ag building and uh, had a composting toilet. So then we hired an architect and a structural engineer and had reports done. It took four and a half years. Didn't have to make any changes. Carolyn, do you want to tell Kirsten how we started? This came so much later, really. Yeah, that building right there, that's, that was our first building. And we had it where this little trailer is. We had our 24 foot trailer that we all lived in right next to it. What we did first to give our daughter a little more personal space, we got bunk beds for the kids in this room. This is not a stairway. No. Nope. But we use it as one. <laughs> The, the broken concrete, there's a gravel company there. And I would fill up the truck when I brought the kids to school and when I picked them up from school. So at least twice a day, I got two loads. But I blew up two mo motors, putting too much concrete in. It's hard to be perfect using all this weird stuff. I built this when the kids were in school. And each of these colors represents two hours. So I would, I would have two hours to mix a color, get it on the wall, clean the tools and drive down the hill to, to get our son from kindergarten who got out at 12 noon, you know. And then our daughter got out at 3.30. So I, I would come back, do another load with my son around, get it on the wall, clean the tools and go back and get the... And if you're not a perfectionist, then you can accept this, you know, you just have to accept a lot, a lot of acceptance. <laughs> Oh, and that is a straw bale wall. That, yeah, this yeah. is straw. This wall. Yeah. I wanted to do more straw, but because of the storms, it's not really good for wind-driven rain. So I tried to always have overhangs and slightly protected. The straw wall in the shop has seven feet of porch. It's not very big, <laughs> but... Yeah, so th this is a straw wall oh. and then, you know, built-in bookcase. This building is also insulated with uh, Patagonia surfboard foam. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Although it takes about 50 times longer to install than fiberglass insulation. So, so this was your bedroom. This is yeah, where this, you slept, or your kid's this, bedroom, or what? Yeah, kids yeah, first. Yeah, kids first, and then now it's ours. Yeah. Now it's yours. We claim it, yes. Okay. It's yours. Because, I mean, now you have a choice, but you chose it because... It's the best room. It's quiet. I mean, the, the wind and the rain... It's a little bit protected. Yeah, a little more protected, just coming around this curb right here. Yeah. Although, we do get a lot of wind and rain. Yeah, we just put a new door on because the old door is completely rotted. I mean, it just gets slammed. And then we have a closet. I love it's the door! So it's so cute! We got that in the door. This is big. I mean, you fit a lot in here. It's, going it's, got, it's got some cedar. You can see I just added on to the, oh, yeah. this was the exterior. There was a window here, yeah. but I knew that I was going to take it out. And so the, I, the frame for the door was already here when I demoed and built the floor and added on the, there's a boardroom next door. I call it the boardroom, which is also a guest room. So in a way, this first was a window and now it's a door into a closet. Yeah. And then here's another door that goes into the boardroom. <laughs> oh, the boardroom. So, so ah, board, surfboards. We can go, yeah, we can go around the other side. But, I'm peeking, yeah. But if you want to go rain-free during a storm, you don't have to walk out that door, which will blow w rain right into you. You can go out this way and stay underneath. So that room was the third room you built after it went in succession? Yeah, I built the closet and this room, the boardroom at the same time, added on this, years later. But you built my office after this room. Yeah. So, should we go up to the office room? Also not a stairway. 
<laughs> so it, it's kind of like a compound, you know, everyone has their own space. Yeah, so come on in. This used to be my office, but now it is the guest room. My desk used to be here. It was a whole built-in desk here. So I'd sit here and do all my work. Mm -hmm. And then we had a racking system here for all my samples and all that. And then Cameron and I just slept on the floor initially for, wow. for four years, actually, so wow. on the floor. And then when the kids dispersed, yeah, yeah. we moved down into that room down below. It's a great room. Everyone who stays here, they, they love it. And it's not huge, so it's no. just like, keep, right. it's big enough, right? right? So this wood is the same wood that came out of the Lockheed plant in Los Angeles. This was the roof. So we used it as flooring and roofing in here. So you got wood from Lockheed as well as metal? Yeah, and it was really cheap. It was 25 cents a board foot. We had to pull, like, by the time I pulled all the nails, we had three and a half, five gallon containers of 16 penny nails. Oh, wow, it's work. But it was, it's really good wood and beautiful. But you can see all the holes and there's some paint. You can see why it took you so long to do anything. Yeah, that's old growth fur. And that's all from Lockheed. Yeah. And this is also used, all the roofing was used, which is more challenging because, you know, you, you want to use really long sheets, but sometimes you have to piece it together. <laughs> right, and then we added, this is the back side of the closet that you saw, the roof on the closet, oh. rolling into the boardroom, which rolls into the composting toilet. <gasps> so during the really lean water years, we gutted all of these buildings so that we could capture all the rainfall from these roof lines. And there's a 1300 gallon tank down there. We have capacity for 26,000 gallons of water. Yeah, this had hot water. We have hot water. Is that a hot water? It, yeah, we only have cold water now, oh my God. but it did have hot water, but I disconnected it because we, we have an outdoor shower up there in the laundry room. That's the construction tank. That was our first water tank. This is our four inch line and our two inch line. This is for fire and this is for the house. It comes from the top that we have 15,000 gallons up there. And so I was able to take the trencher and come down the hill and put the water lines in. Okay. The home installation, you, you did it yourself? The, all the plumbing. And all the electrical. Yeah, we did do the electrical. So the gutters are connected to a 1,200 gallon tank. And we can empty that into our 5,000 gallon tank below the bowl. At the bottom of the driveway is our pumping station which our existing well, well infrastructure, and we pump it up to the top 200 feet, and we put it in those three 5,000 gallon tanks. So we have 50 pounds of pressure in 100 feet, and that's enough to be legal for our fire sprinkler system in the big house. So we pump up to these tanks, so you started off with a well, with a well, and that worked, and then it didn't work. And then it went dry. After seven years? Seven or? years, it went dry. And then we saved money, worked and saved and saved, and we dug another one. And within eight months, that well went dry. $30,000. $30,000. So then that's when we said, we're done. We want all of our water on top of the ground now. And this ridge line, it's got this amazingly hard white rock, which is, was 10,000 feet under the ocean wow. millions of years ago. And just for me to get from here, you know, where the, the lines go down the hill, yeah. from that newest tank, which is the third tank, yeah. it took me a week. To, to make that line. Because this stuff is just I, so, so hard. hard. So once you realize your second well was dry, then you thought, okay, we need to do some research. 
or how did you know what to do next? <laughs> well, no, by then we had pretty much accepted that we were going to stay whether, you know, our wells went dry or not. The reality was if we're going to live on rainwater, we have the roof line. You designed it for that. All we had to do was put the plumbing infrastructure in. For some reason, I don't think you're allowed to have uh, a rainwater harvesting system and use it as potable water. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Because, I mean, that's, that's where drinking water comes from. <laughs> Cameron, you've always said, too, at the end of the day, it has to do with plumbing code. The entire plumbing code would have to change to allow for a new way of thinking and a new way of, of implementing for water. I mean, it's 40 acres of land. You know, we don't have any neighbors. It's, yeah, they we're probably let us slide because of... I'm sure, you know, we're not harming anybody. And they knew we weren't rebels and renegades. We were just trying to live our life. And it took a long time and a lot of money, but it, it worked, it worked out. Four years, you say, to yes. get the, all the permits? Four and a half years, Four and a half yeah. Years. Some of the research I did w was from Greece. You know, the Greeks had cisterns. Yeah. And I remember mentioning that to the uh, wastewater guy at building and planning, you know, and he's like, we need something a little bit more up to date than that. You mean the ancient Greeks and the cisterns? Ancient Greeks. You know, we've known how to move water for m millennia. Yeah. This is our orchard. We collect water for it from these two mountainsides. The water comes down, goes into the, the crotch, we call it, and comes down into a, a debris filter and then goes into a 5,000 gallon tank. And we have some apples, a few apples left, pomegranates, some Asian pears. And so the water comes from the bowl and goes into the tank. When the mud bowl is full, we're able to turn on the faucet down here and we can water with bowl water. And this transitions between the two. We're able to shut the valve and open the valve depending on whether we're using the tank or the bowl. I built this. It has a beautiful. It's, it's super simple. It just has a washing machine in it. Yeah. German on demand hot water heater. It's really gray nice. water, waters everything it's down. So the water is just all rainwater. So just basic. And we have a five micron filter there. And all the gray water plumbed underneath. The water's all the flower beds. Yeah, so that's what the copper gutter looks like. Everything has to be able to take 100 mile an hour winds, you know. Actually, 120 is the highest. <laughs> the composting toilet. That was one of the first decisions we made when we lost the first well is, you know, do we want to flush drinking water down the toilet? This is the composting toilet. I got it out of a permaculture book. It's a two chambered system. So we have one chamber here that's sitting for two and a half years. And we're using this one right now. We were going to building and planning and they're like, we can't even talk about composting toilets, you know? He goes, well, the plumbing code will never allow for it. And I'm like, well, it, it doesn't have to because there's no water involved. There's no plumbing involved. It's just a... Uh, a different way of handling waste. And so this drops, so it all drops down underneath? Drops down underneath. I think we were the first ones that were allowed to have a composting toilet legally. So one chamber is being used and one chamber is, that's been in there. We just switched over. So just a couple few months. So this one's empty and this one's full. 
and you can see it's already dropped like four inches. And it smells like hay. Yeah, it just smell like hay. all the grass cuttings, you know, in the summertime, we, yeah. we stir it. I've got a little hoe and once a week or, you know, whenever. Yeah. 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 Like fresh, freshly cut grass. Yeah, yeah. Huh? So this will take how long to fill? About two years, two and a half years. Which is plenty of time to let this. Yeah. Huh. Pretty simple, actually. We just finished unloading the side of the chamber. And so we have an opportunity to look at the, the material that comes out. The humanoid. Pretty much like the green waste that goes in. There's some chunks, but for the most part, it just really kind of loamy. We had all of the material tested. There's no fecal coliform bacteria after two years and everything becomes a really uh, nice compost. This is the, the closet that you saw before. And then this is what I call the boardroom, which has a, a bed in it, but the bed's up. But, but the walls are rejected cabinets, like this finished bamboo plywood. And then like, I think that came from some the outbuilding, the cedar. Well, that was a bed, this platform here. Yeah, the, that, that was an old gazebo, the wood, you know, two by two. The mattress is just, yes. our son lived in here for a while when he was about 20, 19. He came back for a couple of few months and stayed in here. Mm -hmm. I broke a longboard, so I made this little belly board out of the broken longboard. So you work on surfboards too. You don't, you work on everything. Yeah. I mean, when I was a teenager, I made my own surfboards. And when did you first construct something? Building. Here? Uh, I've made a lot of furniture. Self-taught. Well, I, I, in college, I worked construction, you know, down in San Diego. And so I learned how to frame. But yeah, renovating um, Victorians up in San Francisco really got me into woodworking. And then I went to a woodworking school. I think that was amazing training to have before this project. Because so much of what we collected, you know, we collect a lot of oak flooring and I was able to build using that knowledge. You have a lot of your furniture in here too, right? I made the couch. This is uh, the couch is is flooring material. I'm not happy about the cushions. Something this this is a better pleather. Both of them are eco pleathers, but this one doesn't have any kind of weird color thing, and so it's a more stable. But it, this one has rollerblade wheels. You can move. And it spins around. And that's a bit is. And this is, this is part of that, uh, the tub. This is a strainer. I think this is the industrial strainer part. With the tub outside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, here's a, a classic example. This is 100%. There's some bamboo sample and copper. Just some random steel I got somewhere and old. You guys know, you guys know San Francisco, sash windows. windows. Yeah. So those are counterweighted. This, this door weighs 10 pounds. And you can see the two, two five gallon weights. I did a lot of repairs of those windows up in the Bay Area. The sash would go up into a pulley and in the sills of the windows, depending on how heavy the window was, it was a 20 pound window you'd have two 10 pound weights that went up and down inside the sill i had some weights and it, it was just a fun you know kind of challenge because it's hard to tell how to open it i had people go oh or, or, where's the handle and th and this cabinet the size of it were based on these two doors that i got these are just two fur doors and um it's the pantry you know it's and then this has two layers of plywood and three on the bottom where I was able to bolt in the stairway. Yeah. And then they, yeah, both of them. An alternating little. Oh, it's great. It's fabulous, yeah. 
And, uh, and all these cabinets, the salvage place, these were just laying in the dirt, these panels. And I just added them a drone to the side and used the European hinges in the wood and that were able to carry the... These were lying in the dirt? Yeah, just random aluminum wow. milled things. And they, you thought, okay, these would make good cabinets or... Yeah, anodized aluminum on there. And th this is a perforated stainless and classic mortise and tenon, you know, that I learned at school. And I like the way you opened it, it's so seamless. It's a track up here and then it's just There's a little track just for reference on the bottom. And the countertops, this is 52 pieces of 12 different kinds of marble. I knew I needed a certain amount of bullnose. Just a um, tile saw did that. So you are not afraid of any sort of material or type of project shape? Well, it does get scary sometimes, but you try not to have any fear. This is a cabinet. So these down here, these were World War II dummy rounds. So instead of using live ammunition, they packaged, these were full-size dummies for the three and a quarter inch guns on naval ships. And I took all the bottoms to hold the cabinets up because four of them came in these, in these boxes, four wooden missiles, basically with steel tops. And they were $5 each, turned maple. So I, I bought a whole bunch of them and held up all the, here's a little longer version of it, more copper. I liked everything about it, you know, the machine finger joints, the rope, the size of these things is just kind of weird and fun. And it's a panel and there's all these panels, copper, aluminum, stainless, wood. I, I like, this was a really fun project with different sizes of glass block from the salvage place. One of the first things we put in here was the chimney and the stove for Thanksgiving we had. And so I built the cabinets angled so that they came out to kind of reference the front of the stove. Oh, yeah. Oh, I look at this grower. Oh. So you needed to do a lot of work here to, you see the shape? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, they're yeah. angled. It's like a trapezoid, right? Or what do you? <laughs> so those, you, you, you built them by hand? Yeah. And we just measured all our pots and pans and, and we've always had them. So I knew how big to make the drawers. And there were other things that came up in the canyon, like a bridge came down, Redwood Bridge, uh, just down the hill on the bottom. And, and this was part of it. Uh, and I got a few of those, but this held up the structure that I put the tile on. I think I put the tile on before I had any of the doors built. And, this, uh, have you guys been to Mendocino, Fort Bragg? There's a glass beach up there. Oh, yeah. And so in the wintertime, nobody collected the stainless steel that would end up on the beach. So I would just fill bags and like, you know, this thing. This is the fastest chair in the West. <laughs> I mean, there was a guy who came here and rode it in the bowl. He got two wheels out, like a 19 year old skater guy. Super crazy. <laughs> Talk about your table, your table. Oh, yeah, and here's another uh, barrel hoop kind of design. It, those wine barrels and whiskey barrels, I straighten out the hoops and then weave them kind of. I can't really pound it flat anymore. My arm hurts. Is it? So it's the end of an era, but it was fun while it lasted. The glass, where do you find these? Like at thrift stores and stuff. The, if you look closely, there's probably some scratches. And this chair here, is it a chair? This is interesting. Yeah, this is kind of a really, uh, it, this is one of the, these chairs. I had a commission and made some extras, and this is just a chopped down version. So it's kind of beach cherry. And this is those, like the shelving, the, the panels so up there. This is your workshop then, right? 
Yeah, this was a my most recent score. Pews from the church, they just put them outside and said, free to take. Yeah. It's mahogany from the 1950s. What could you use it for? Any ideas yet? I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do uh, boxes out of this. I'm going to cut big do dovetails. Yeah. These are the sides. So and I'm thinking about cutting off the ends because these have lumbar and the, you know, the, they fit this profile. So maybe I'll just cut off little ends and just glue it in here. And then I'll cut big dovetails. That's great. It's solid. Fine. You keep finding material. I mean, it, ha it still happens. Nobody wanted to use this material, I think, because it had a shape to it. It wasn't, it wasn't square wood. Yeah. I'm just guessing. Yeah. But. Wow. And so when I run into w some weird stuff, I do mobiles. This has some trailer material. This is called the 20 levels of trailer trash living. Oh, no way. Yeah. Because this is from your, from your trailer that you live yeah. in? So it came apart and it, it, it died. <laughs> it, yeah. We dismantled it here. And I used all the aluminum. Uh, for the ceiling going into the bathroom outside the boardroom. That's all the trailer siding. So you reused the siding of the... The, the, the trailer you lived in. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. And this is the straw wall. This one's straw. Oh, this is straw. Oh, yeah, that's the only one I ended up keeping. Because yeah. it's protected here. It's away from the south winds. Yeah. And you see it's like... Uh, um, yeah, it kind of billows out. Billows, a little. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And so the, you can get it, uh, see how the, initially the foundation was poured 18 inches for bales. But then I started using a lot of this after uh, the first storm, 97, 98 El Nino. We got 120 mile an hour winds and I'm like, I don't know. I met this guy who was the underground building guru. But that would have been great to dig into the hillside and do an underground building. That's, that's how I would do it over again. <laughs> but it, you learn, yeah. I constantly was thinking about where it might be a good place to sit. So whenever I had a chance, I would make a chair. Like, you know, this is a pool coping, which didn't come in the gravel company very often. And so I was really happy to find coping. I thought, this is a perfect chair. And then there's other places, any place I just thought might be a good place to sit for a little bit and take a rest. Right, and so now it's very shady here, but when we first built this building, this tree right here, which we planted this oak tree, it was, what, two feet tall. And I remember we would sit out here and we think, oh my gosh, you know, in 10 years, we're actually going to have some shade. And now look at it. I mean, now it's 26 years. Where are you right now? In Ohio. <laughs> it's amazing how humans have developed architecturally. Okay, so we're in the middle of paradise. <laughs> you know, whether or not they were trained to design buildings, people have built buildings that worked for the place that they were in. I'm still changing things, but for the most part, it works.